Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. So when should we throw exceptions and when should we not? If these questions bothers you then stay here because you're in the right place. In this video I'm about to show you what I personally think is a very reasonable way to go about exceptions and understand exactly when to throw them, if we should throw them at all and when shouldn't we throw them. So let's dive right into it. So let's start by understanding conceptually what actually an exception is or should be. So as the name implies, if we think about the word of exception, it's actually just an event. So something that happened somewhere down the execution path of your application that was actually not really foreseen and that disrupts the entire flow of our program. So in other words, our program can't simply go further because we are in a situation that we don't really know exactly where to continue. I know that this definition might be a little bit too theoretical and it doesn't really answer the question that we have started with. So when should we throw an exception? Now, generally, I would say that we need or we should throw an exception in our applications whenever a fundamental assumption for the correct execution of a function is not met. Let's try to get a little bit more practical. And here is a very basic function that is meant to actually describe this. So as you can see, we have here this function, which is get max, and it takes in an array of numbers. Now, if we look at what this function does or this method, we simply check if the numbers of or, or if the array is null or it doesn't have any number in it, then we throw here an argument exception. Now, the reason why we throw here an argument exception is because, OK, what's actually the meaning of this function or what is this function supposed to do? Well, it needs to get us the maximum value from an array of integers. But this means in turn that a fundamental assumption of this function to work is that we have an array. So if we don't have an array or if the array doesn't contain anything, then we really don't have any way to continue it. So we can't really do that. So in that case or in this case, we can just simply throw this argument exception. However, on the other hand, we often hear that throwing exceptions in is bad. No matter where we look in Medium on YouTube videos, uh, there are a lot of people saying that throwing exceptions everywhere is bad. And I tend to agree with that. And there are a few reasons why I also think that throwing literally everywhere exception is a bad thing. First of all, they make the control flow really, really messy. So let me explain what I mean by that. We are here basically in this account class. And if we take a look here, this account class is part of our domain and it is basically an entity. And on this account class, we have this withdraw method. Obviously, we want to withdraw some money from a bank account. So that's what we want to do. Now, here there is one fundamental thing to check, which is an assumption without which the program can actually not execute correctly. Now, if we want to withdraw an amount that actually exceeds the balance that we have in our account, then obviously we can't do that. So what we do here is we throw an insufficient balance exception. However, if we literally are in this scenario and we can imagine that the execution of our program is here and it actually checks this if. Now, obviously, the logic execution of the program would be to actually go then to line 26 to the balance minus minus equals amount. However, if the exception is thrown and if you have the debugger set here, you will see that you are basically taken to a totally different place in the application, probably somewhere where this exception is caught could be in the color of this method or it could be, for instance, in a global exception handling mechanism that we might have in our in our API, which could be an I exception handler or it could be an exception handling middleware or it could be an exception handling filter. But still, the important thing here is that when when this exception occurs, then the execution of the program actually goes somewhere else. And that's why it makes the control flow of the program really messy and hard to follow if exceptions occur. One other important aspect to why throwing exception is actually bad, in my opinion, is that exceptions are actually not part of the method's signature. So there's no really direct way to tell, OK, this method or this function, what does it return? Does it return an exception? No, unfortunately, we can't do that in C Sharp. Obviously, we can come here, for instance, and we can have an XML documentation. And in the XML documentation, we can say that, hey, this function might throw an exception. And that's a good way if you throw exceptions, they definitely need to be documented. But the, my point here is, or my point is that you can see it in the signature of the methods. We, there's no way to tell about if this function throws an exception or not. 
And last but not least, there's also a performance cost to throwing exceptions. Now, obviously, and I've said this, and I will always say this in practice, in 10 years of experience in professionally developing software, I have never really met a scenario where throwing exception actually became a performance bottleneck. However, if you do some absolute benchmarking, you will see that theoretically exceptions slow down your application by around 30%. And I have actually made a video about this. And if you want to take a look, then just follow the card that you see somewhere in the corner up right. Still, even if I've never seen this being a performance bottleneck, that's something that we need to take into consideration. Okay, so now we have covered some very basic theory about what I think that exceptions should be and when they should be thrown. But I know that, at least for me, and I think for a lot of people, there is really a huge gap from the theory to actually going into practice and understanding in an exact scenario, for instance, in an API, okay, where should I throw? or where I shouldn't. So therefore, let's go over to Visual Studio again and I want to show you three different scenarios and describe them and talk about them and understand where should we throw an exception and where not. So here's a first scenario. Let's imagine our banking application. We have this REST API, which would be kind of like the entry point to some things that a customer can do, for instance, in his banking account. And one thing is, for instance, that might require the bank. However, still, that's something that might be performed by some bank employee from the computer in the office is a customer wants to open an account. And here we have some, well, things that, that we want. We want to have a friendly name for the account. We need an initial balance and we need to define the currency here. And this open account, this is an I request, but we can use this also in this very simple setup as the API contract. So what the API will actually get in the controller to actually create a new account. However, then we have here the handler. Now in this handler, what we have here is obviously the request and the cancellation token, but what do we do? So when we open an account, we cannot open it with a negative balance. So we check if the request balance is less than zero, and then here we just throw an exception. And then also we check, for instance, if the friendly name is null or empty, we also throw an exception. Now, the question is, is it legitimate for us to throw an exception in this case? Well, I would argue that for this specific scenario, it is not very wise to throw an exception. Why? Because actually this is a matter of data validation. So once again, that's our public API. This is how data enters our system. Now, we need always to have validation in place when data enters our system to make sure that the data that was entered by the users is actually a valid data. So instead of actually throwing here exceptions, we could come up some, with something very simple. For instance, here, if this is required, we could then just use, for instance, some data annotation and say that, okay, this is required and ASP.NET Core will actually take care about this and if, well, the friendly name is not there, it will then generate obviously a default exception. Now for the balance, once again, we can come here and here we can, for instance, have here a range and we can say that kind of like the range should be, I don't know, between zero and uh, let's say 1 million or something like that. And for this currency, once again, we can say that it is required. However, this is an enum, so it will also by default have a number. So right now, just by doing this, we can simply come here and don't need these checks at all, because if the data validation fails, then what it will happen? Well, the API ASP.NET Core will already return an exception. So the first conclusion here is whenever actually we have something to do with data validation, so when we want to validate things that come into our application, we should perform this validation at the edge. So right where it enters our system. In that case, it would be in our API in this specific implementation based on these data annotations. However, you could, you could use Fluent validation and uh, any other libraries to your convenience to actually achieve, uh, achieve exactly the same result. Let's go now to a second scenario and see exactly if we should throw an exception there or not. So in this second scenario, we can simply assume that the customer goes to an, to an ATM and wants to do something. However, if the customer goes to the ATM, the very first thing that you need to do is you need to kind of like authenticate yourself based on, well, with your credit card that has the account number on it, 
and you have to provide your pin obviously okay now this idea is here this is what we try to replicate in this behavior so we have this authenticate and where we take an account number and when we kind of like take a pin however this is an integer that's not really required so i can simply also just remove that now in the handler what we do here is okay we have the account repository and then we get the account from the account repository because there is one simple check that we want to do and the check that we want to do here actually is okay if the pin on the account is actually not equal or does not equal to the pin that the customer entered then we throw an exception so is this a valid approach here should we throw this exception or maybe we shouldn't well my answer to this is that we shouldn't throw an exception in this case why because well this is not something that kind of like is not expected so we always can expect that it could be a typo for instance and well in this case the customer might enter an invalid pin so that's something that doesn't really happen unexpectedly this is part of the business process if you are working with with a banking application this definitely could happen so what we could simply do here is instead of just throwing an exception and i will just use a comment here is for instance use the result pattern instead now if you want me to also create a video with my take on how we can implement a result pattern just let me know in the comments below and i will make sure to create one for now just notice here the conclusion is that for this type of scenario where there is a business process that can take into consideration that something might go wrong we can just simply use something like a result pattern and not throw an exception but turn this result actually in a bad request in the api layer or something similar to that let's now move over to the third scenario that i would like to cover and in this case is where the customer okay the customer successfully authenticated in in the previous use case and in this use case the customer wants to withdraw a certain amount from his banking account now what we do here is obviously we have the request where we have the account number and the amount and then we have the request handler now the thing is here and we've seen this earlier we get the account by account number but we know also based on the documentation that this could actually throw some exception now what we do in this case is we just catch the exception we log it here we just log it to the console and just re-throw it and well we could even not catch it and it will be caught by our global exception handling mechanism if we implement it but i just wanted to catch here the exception to make it visible that this specific action could actually throw an exception now the place where we throw the exception is actually in our domain layer and it is actually here on our account now this account for instance it has this withdraw and this withdraw it might throw an insufficient balance exception if the requested amount exceeds the current balance now the question is is it legitimate for us to throw an exception here in this domain layer at this point or it is not well probably you would be tempted to say that not we can even also use the result pattern here but in my experience and on my personal reasoning i think that actually throwing exceptions in the domain layer is very important and is also legitimate or it is a legitimate place to do so let me try to explain you why and let's imagine that we have a request that comes in now you see that this request travels to, to the different layers so it goes into our api where we can do some validations but the the place for doing the validation if well the user can re redraw that amount is not something that is actually a data validation so it's not something that we need to perform there so the request might go then to our use cases layer now our use cases layer well they might do this very simple check by themselves and then just return a result pattern that says that okay you cannot do that at all however if for instance a developer forgets for instance to do this then we would have a very big problem because our application would be or would be placed in an invalid state so it means that due to some reasons if something happens and this is not caught basically in all the layers until we go to the real core of the application which is our domain then in the domain we should make sure still that we don't place our application on an invalid state in domain driven design we would guard against invariance this is what we would say 
Now, that's why, from my point of view, it is totally valid or a valid approach to throw exceptions in the domain. There is also another reason to it. In a lot of circumstances and applications, the domain layer is actually a class library. You can virtually take it away, put a different application layer on top of it, like with different use cases, and still use it. So this means that we can't really simply return here a result pattern from my point of view, because you don't know exactly what the approach would be in other applications where you might reuse the exact same class library. To summarize this, I think that we can stick to these very simple three aspects. We should make sure that we validate the user inputs or data entry without throwing, and we should do this at the edge of our application, so right where the data enters our system. Then we can respond to faulty application logic also without throwing by using something similar to the result pattern and as a third line of defense, only throw if there's no other way going forward. And if you don't throw, it would mean that you would need to put your application on an invalid state. In that case, you should definitely throw. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button so that other users might also find it easily here on YouTube. And if you're not a subscriber of this channel, make sure to show some love to Cold Wrinkles and hit the subscribe button and make sure that you also check the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever there's new content posted on this channel. And if you have any type of question or just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave a comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.